I didn't know. 
without his Zach Charbonnet being able to do anything. So if the Patriots can contain Breezal and, you know, try their best to limit Garrett Wilson, which they were able to do a good job on Jamar Chase in week one, I don't see why they can't topple this Jets team. So I'm going with my first Patriots victory uh, as a prediction in this year. So Patriots take Thursday night for me. After that, we move into our Sunday morning slate. First up, we've got a matchup between the New York Giants and the Cleveland Browns. The Giants so far, week one, they looked like a disaster, losing um, pretty, pretty uh, badly to the Vikings, you know, not a nice performance at all. Last week, they lose to the Commanders in more so of an embarrassing fashion. They cannot kick their extra points. They end up only scoring 18 points. I think it was 18 months, and losing to the Commanders, who won purely kicking uh, field goals. So if you're able to score three touchdowns, yes, that is a big improvement from week one, but still lots of like self-inflicted wounds that allow you to lose that game. I still don't trust the Giants all that much. It's, it's better. It's getting better. But um, other than the Malik Neighbors breakout game, I don't know if there's a lot of positives to take away from this team yet. Now, on the other hand, the Cleveland Browns, they went out in week one, did not look good at all against the Cowboys. Week two, their defense really stepped up. Their defense is showing signs of life, uh, more so what we saw last year from them. Offensively, they were okay. They didn't do an amazing job against the Jaguars, I wouldn't say, but uh, I feel like they have garnered enough respect, and, you know, I, I feel like that they'll do better than the Giants. Giants week one were horrible, week two a little bit better, but this Gi Cleveland Browns defense I do think is up to the task. They can definitely lock down everyone on the Giants offense, and once they do that, then their offense just has to be better than um, the Giants defense, which if they are losing to seven field goals, you know, I'm sure that the Browns will be able to convert at least one of those drives into a touchdown. Even though it has been kind of lackluster thus far, uh, I, I do think that they're getting better week in and week out. Deshaun Watson looked more promising in week two. So I'll give it to them here. Uh, going with the Cleveland Browns. Then our next matchup is between the Green Bay Packers and the Tennessee Titans. This, I will say, was very surprising to me. I predicted a Green Bay Packers loss against the Colts last week, thinking that, you know, with Malik Willis at the helm, they're not really going to be able to throw the ball all that much on this Colts team. The Colts just lost to the Texans in a very respectable fashion. So, uh, naturally, I went with the Colts beating the Packers. Now, what I didn't anticipate was how bad the Colts' run defense was. Joe Mixon got 30 carries over 150 yards in Week 1, and it was pretty much the exact same case for Josh Jacobs in Week 2 for this Packers team. Already at halftime, he had over 100 yards. Uh, the Packers took a large early lead. Anthony Richardson was dealing with lots of turnover issues. He did not look very good. Um, and so, yeah, the Colts end up only scoring a touchdown at the very end, losing pretty handily to a backup-led Green Bay Packers team. So the Packers, when they need to run the ball, it seems like they can do it. Um, no, I don't think that 30-plus carries every week for Josh Jacobs is sustainable, but uh, Jordan Love is trending pretty positively. I think we'll see him return in week five, uh, week four, week five, not this week. So Malik Willis getting to play against this whole team. I will say I was very impressed with him, you know, going 12 for 14 on passing. Didn't throw for a bunch of yards. I think it was 120 yards, which was pretty on par with what I was expecting. But he does have rushing upside and rushed for over 40 yards himself, including this one play where the Packers center threw up on the ball and he was supposed to pass, but he ended up just scrambling with it because obviously there was vomit all over the ball. Um, so pretty crafty, very safe and smart decision making by Malik Willis. So if he can play like that again, I see no reason why they can't beat this Titans team. The Titans on offense, these are some of the worst turnovers I have ever seen. Like, Will Levis making absolutely boneheaded plays. It reminds me of, I think it was Josh Allen against the Texans a couple years ago in the wild card playoff game. Um, obviously, game on the line, he wants to do everything he can to make sure his team is still in it. It, it might have been overtime. He kind of runs forward and then very idiotically 
throws the ball backwards at his tight end, and he luckily goes out of bounds, but almost through the entire game for his team right there, and Will Levis is actively making at least one play like that per week so far, so I wonder what we're going to see on the low light reel from him this week, hopefully he can get it in check, but so far he's been getting an earful from the Titans' new head coach, and though, like, yeah, I don't know, the, the, the Titans, they're, they're too messy for me to say anything, they got off to decent starts, but like, completely fall apart in the second half, and I think that it's going to happen again. So I'm going to go with the Packers here. They, you know, broke me wrong last week. I'm going to roll out with them this time. Next up, we've got a matchup between the Chicago Bears and the Indianapolis Colts. This one will be interesting. You know, both teams, I will say, did disappoint last week. Um, it's not like I had the Bears winning or anything, but the Colts game, I didn't catch a lot of it. I was able to see glimpses here and there. I was watching at a sports bar. Uh, but pretty underwhelming day from them. Anthony Richardson did not look good. Uh, whereas the Bears, probably one of the worst offensive showcases I've ever seen. I was watching this game on a flight from Denver to California, uh, Southern California, and they had direct TV, so I was able to watch parts of the game on that flight. And my, oh my, uh, second half, Caleb Williams looked atrocious. Now I'm not going to blame all of that performance on him. They were not able to establish the run, very stingy runs, defensive line, also barely giving him any time to throw. He was constantly under pressure, um, but even when he was under pressure, he was making horrible decisions. It seemed like any time that he left the pocket to make a, like, throw on the run, Russell Wilson type play, it was going directly to the other team, and those are plays that probably worked out for him when he was at USC, but that's not going to work in the NFL. Like, on three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back drives, I saw him throw a pick that either got called back or was a pick on a throw. Uh, anything past, like, 15 yards down the field, he has not worked out that part of his game. The intermediate and short passing has been fine, but, uh, you know, not being able to establish the run has severely limited the the Bears thus far, and there's just no chemistry with the wide receivers whatsoever. I think DJ Moore was visibly frustrated. Keenan Allen's at this one out, but just like horrible, horrible throws. Uh, he, he couldn't even throw it out of bounds without getting caught for intentional grounding, so lots of rookie growing pains for Caleb Williams thus far. The Colts, pretty impressive week one, lots of mistakes in week two. You have to imagine that they do a bit of a better job against this Bears team, who is really struggling offensively as well. Uh, as far as defenses go, I think that the Bears defense has been pretty impressive thus far, getting a few sacks on the Texans' old line, you know, holding their ground, only limiting the Texans to like 19 points. I was, uh, maybe in the end, they ended up getting more, but I was fairly impressed with their defensive performances thus far. Obviously with the Titans, they were kind of just handing them the ball, but the Colts' defense, week one, they did a good job. Week two, they did a bad job. Neither week were they really able to um, limit the run, but for Chicago, Chicago last year was leading the league in rushing, and now they lose Justin Fields. They have not had a run identity at all. Um, and I, I will say, between Joe Mixon and, who was the other guy that just ran out? Josh Jacobs, those are more like experienced backs. DeAndre Swift, I don't fear as much. And this whole line is not held up as well as I expected it to from last year. So all things considered on the Bears' offensive side of the ball, I still don't trust them enough to give them a victory. I'm going to go with the Colts here. I think that they'll finally get their first look more like their week one selves, and they do have an easier matchup. Um, obviously, I did think that the Packers were going to be pretty easy for them compared to the Texans, but they proved me wrong. Uh, let's see if they prove me wrong again. Next up, we've got a matchup between the Houston Texans and the Minnesota Vikings. Now, this actually should be a very nice game. The Texans so far coming out 2-0, I think that was on most people's radar, uh, beating the Bears, beating the Colts. These are not teams that I think people were coming, were going to, 
we're thinking we're going to beat the Texans. Everyone's pretty gung-ho and high on them this year, and so far they have delivered no unexpected losses so far. The Vikings, on the other hand, they have been very impressive. I do apologize to Vikings fans. I think I've been severely discounting this team. I was low on them coming off the offseason, thought that they were going to be just more laid down in the dumps, not be even a competitive team, probably one of the worst in the league, and actually they're one of the few that are left 2-0 after two weeks, um, and they face decent teams for sure, uh, not, not the Giants, not expecting, not saying that the Giants are a good team, but the 49ers, I did not see that coming whatsoever, uh, the Vikings defense has held up mighty fine so far, going against a somewhat injured 49ers offense, but definitely did a great job. Sam Darnold has been doing enough, you know. I didn't think that he would be doing as well as he is. Connecting with Justin Jefferson for a 97-yard touchdown last week. Uh, all things considered, the Vikings are a much better team than I expected, and they're competing. They're competing their tails off, and you have to tip your hat off to that. Uh, I do uh, want to apologize once again, because, yeah, once again, I'm going to pick against them. Third straight week that I'm picking the Vikings, picking against the Vikings, just because I trust the Texans more. I do expect them to be a good team so far. I've liked what I've seen from them on offense, defensively. Uh, they did a good job last week, you know, creating a lot of pressure. I think that the Vikings, they have been very solid on both sides of the ball, but... I'm willing to be proven wrong just one more time because if they go 3-0, then that means they probably are like a playoff caliber team and I'm just not ready to accept that yet. Uh, the Houston Texans, on the other hand, I do expect them to take this division. Um, so, yeah, uh, maybe... Maybe, man. If the Vikings win this one, you know, you, you really gotta consider it. This is Chase Keenum 2.0. Uh, those Vikings, all those years back when they played against the Saints and had the Minnesota Miracle game. Maybe we're seeing another year of that. Um, but, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> Anyhow, after that, we've got a matchup between the Philadelphia Eagles and the New Orleans Saints. Now, Unexpected things from both teams. Uh, first up, let's talk about the Philly Philly loss on Monday night to the Atlanta Falcons. Quite a shock, you know. They were leading, and then all they had to do was, you know, convert one more third down play. Would have been able to pack the game, run out the clock. Instead, Saquon Barkley drops the ball. You've got um, Atlanta with not that much time, like one and a half minutes left on the clock to go down the field, score, win this game. Doesn't even take them a minute. You know, I think it takes like a full 58 seconds. They completely march all the way down the field, put together a very nice drive, take the lead with about 35 seconds left in the game, and then Philly gets the ball back. One snap, and then second snap. Jalen Hurts throws a game ceiling interception, and the Eagles lose it. Uh, the Eagles... Apparently, Jalen Leonard was the only one to address the team. He went out and talked about their loss, their performance and loss, and Nick Sirianni confirmed that Jalen Leonard was the only one, like the players, coached themselves. They didn't have the coaches speak, which is an interesting strategy. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like I am treating this Eagles team as the two years ago Eagles or the Eagles to start the first half of last season, and the Eagles, if they lose this game, then we're looking more at the team that was, you know, skidding towards the end of last season. I'm not ready to believe that they're that bad yet, but we'll have to see. That was a, that was a huge joke, in my opinion. Um, really could have won that game, let it all go at the end. Saquon Barkley came out and admitted how bad he feels about it. I think that they have responded to it in the right way. We'll have to see how they actually come out and play, but this Eagles team has not lived up to its potential like yet. As for the Saints, my oh my, has this team been amazing. Week one, putting up 40 plus on the Panthers. I wasn't expecting it to be that dominant. I was expecting the win, but uh, yeah, very nice showcase. It is the Panthers though, after all. Then, to come out against the Dallas Cowboys, hang 40 plus on their head. Wow, uh, that is, that's, that's a real football team right now.
right there. Back to back weeks, putting up over 40 points. I think their first seven drives on offense against the Cowboys all went for touchdowns. Completely stunned Dallas in Dallas. And it is hard. It is hard to pick against them. This offense is rolling. Their defense has been sharp. And yet somehow I'm still going to do it. I am extremely sorry. Uh, I know that I picked against them last week and I probably should learn my lesson. But I also am learning my lesson in don't just go with whoever is expected to win. Uh, week one I went with my gut and that's the best strategy you can go with for week one. Week two I kind of did the same thing. But I also ended up just following suit for what all the majority predictions were. And I do think that if you're going to make anything... If you're going to predict who is going to win, you do have to be bold at times. And based on ceiling, I think that the Philadelphia Eagles can be a better team than the Saints. And I think if they want to have a successful season, this is the week to prove it. You're getting a very hot New Orleans Saints team at home. If you want to prove yourself to be the division leader here, it's up for grabs. You know, the Cowboys, they're at 1-1. One one. Giants, they're at 0-2. Commanders are at 1-1. One one. Um... This is, it really was your division to take the lead in on Monday night. You fell flat. How are you going to respond? I personally think that the Eagles are one of the best teams in the NFC. Uh, I, I think that's what their roster is like. I think that their coaching should allow them to unlock that potential. The Saints have been impressive in weeks one and two. If they continue to win in week three, then I think that they are the clear favorite for the NFC South. Um... So, as silly as it might make me look, I'm going to go with the Eagles here. I'm predicting an upset. I know that 63%, as of right now, 63% of people are predicting for the Saints to win, and that makes complete sense to me. Probably will look a little bit foolish if they end up winning again and scoring 40-plus again, but going with a shocker here uh, for the Eagles. And after that... We've got a matchup between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Pittsburgh Steelers, both teams sitting at 2-0 behind stout defensive performances. Week 1, we had the Chargers defeating the Raiders uh, pretty convincingly just by running it down the, the Raiders' throat and not really passing for all that much. And in Week 2, we kind of saw the exact same thing between the Chargers and the Panthers. Uh, so both weeks, good defense mostly rushing the ball. I think Justin Herbert threw for less than 200 yards once again. They're winning games, and it's not in traditional Chargers fashion from what we've seen in the last couple years. Usually we see Justin Herbert throw for like 315 yards in a close loss. Uh, now they're winning convincingly by running it, and Herbert is really not throwing the ball that much at all. So it's weird, weird times. Now the Pittsburgh Steelers under great coaching and great defense, they have also been able to win both their games. First week against the Falcons, last week against the Broncos. Um, honestly, both teams are doing very similar things. So it really just comes down to which defense do you trust more, which running back room do you trust more, and which quarterback um, in coaching. I do think that compared to the first two weeks, this will be Jim Harbaugh's hardest coaching matchup so far. He's gotten to go against Antonio Pierce. He's gotten to go against rookie head coach Dave Canales. These are not coaches that are better than him by any means. Mike Tomlin, very established, was good when Jim Harbaugh was last year. Still one of the best coaches. And he has gotten this Pittsburgh Steelers team to 2-0 and at the top of the NFC, sorry, AFC North. The Chargers, on the other hand, they've played well, but I do think that they faced not as impressive of opponents, you know, between the Panthers and the Raiders. I feel like everyone was picking them to win both those games. Well, the Broncos, I do think that the Steelers were going to be expected to win that one. Week one, a lot of people did have the Falcons winning, so they've come out, they've turned more heads. We're going to see week three of Justin Fields as the quarterback for this team, and I don't like Justin Fields as much as I like Justin Herbert, but I do think that the Steelers' defense is better. Uh, that is just what I believe. Uh, and even though it's almost 50-50 on this game, I think with the coaching and just similar play styles, 
we're gonna have the Steelers maybe win this game. It'll be weird. Uh, so far we haven't had the Chargers really play from behind for that much of a game, so there's been no reason for Justin Herbert to really throw the ball around all that much. I do think that we see more passing from him in this one. But yeah, I'm gonna go with the Steelers. Uh, having them start 3-0 and would be quite wild, but I do think that Mike Tomlin is going to give Jim Harbaugh a run for his money and not let the Chargers start 3-0. Anywho, after that, let us talk about our next matchup between the Denver Broncos and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm gonna go with the Buccaneers on this one. Uh, the Broncos starting off on to week one pretty sloppy, and then they got to play much better in the late stages against Seattle, but a little bit too late. Uh, then playing against the Steelers, I, I don't know how well or poorly that the Broncos played really in that game. I know the outcome, but uh, let's take a look. <laughs> saw something about, oh, okay, six points. So 13-6 victory for the Steelers in this one. We had two interceptions by Bo Nix. Yeah, really not ideal. 231 passing yards, uh, only 64 yards rushing. So not really able to run the ball all that much. I do think that the Buccaneers' run defense is a mixed bag. Uh, but fact that the Buccaneers are 2-0 coming off a victory against the Detroit Lions speeds volumes to what this team is able to do. Uh, they really limited that Lions offense and I think that the Denver Broncos will be will prove to be easier. It's not like they have as good of a wide receiver room or a quarterback or a running back. Um, really the only way that the Buccaneers I think could lose this game is if all of a sudden the Red Hot Baker Mayfield starts playing like Brown's Baker Mayfield throwing the ball directly to the Broncos secondary making a lot of self-inflicted mistakes and uh, getting frustrated if he gets frustrated then I think he'll play a little bit worse but honestly with everything we've seen so far the Buccaneers they look great they look very nice uh, Baker Mayfield one of the best quarterbacks in the league so far so I am going to trust this Chris Godwin Baker Mayfield connection and predict another Buccaneers victory here. Uh, they proved me wrong last week, and I think that the Broncos are still, they're still in their rookie testing phase. They're not ready to win games yet. So yeah. Next up, kind of matchup between the Carolina Panthers and the Las Vegas Raiders. The Panthers, once again, a very bad performance against the Chargers. In fact, so bad that it caused Dave Canales to bench Bryce Young. Uh, Bryce Young, after the game, he was said to still be the starter. Then we waited one day, and he was benched in favor of Andy Dalton. Now, it's hard to argue that this is a wrong decision. Obviously, you do want to see what Bryce Young can do, but like through all season and through two games this season, he has looked not good, uh, just not able to connect on his throws. The Panthers offense is non-existent. Honestly, the running game was much more impressive um, week two than week one, better than expected, but passing the ball has just been really a struggle for this Panthers team, and how you bench him in favor for the very experienced veteran Andy Dalton. With Andy Dalton, I think that we all know what he is capable of. Back when he was playing quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals, he had some very nice, you know, games. He's able to get the ball down the field, connect with good wide receiver talents, and we've seen glimpses of him being, you know, somewhat productive in the Saints offense and a couple other stints since the Bengals. So, with him, taking over for Bryce Young, I think that I can trust the Panthers offense a lot more. Uh, whereas for the Raiders, talking about the Raiders last week, one heck of an upset. I really did think that the Ravens would come down into Las Vegas. I think they're, no. I don't remember whose game it was. It might have been at Baltimore. Yeah. Uh, either way, whoever's home turf it was played on, for the Ravens to go up like that and for the 
Vegas Raiders to rally and then eventually get that victory against the Ravens. Very, very impressive. I was not expecting it at all. They did a great job of limiting Lamar in that Ravens offense in the fourth quarter. Uh, truly shocking that they were able to do it. Gardner Minshew as it stands. I believe he's tied for second in the league in passing yards through two weeks. Not something that I expected. But hey, that's football, you know. <laughs> Always expect the unexpected. So that's what I'm going to do this week. Even though the Raiders are coming off a very impressive victory after not a very impressive start to the season, I'm going to give this to the Carolina Panthers. <laughs> Just because I think that the Panthers, no one has been able to, you know, they've, they've sucked. They've sucked for a long time here. I think that with a viable option at quarterback, this is a completely new team, we might see them actually able to throw the ball, which is not something they've been able to do so far this season. Uh, throwing the ball is going to unlock the run game as well. I think that this is going to be a big upset game. Uh, Raiders are riding the high of their first win. Started off the season flat, and then big win against the Ravens. I think that they might be able to be caught off guard, and honestly, I'm not expecting the Raiders to have that great of a season. I do think that they're going to be very volatile. They might go out and be playoff teams, and I think that they might lose to very winnable matchups. That's what I kind of expect from them. Um, a wild card kind of performance week in, week out. I'm not expecting them to be consistently good or bad. The Panthers, I do think, are going to be. They're proving to be a bad team, but with this change, it might catch the Raiders off guard. And yeah, uh, I have a bold pick here, going against the 96% majority, but I'm going to get the Carolina Panthers their first victory with Andy Dalton in as quarterback. Next up, we've got a matchup between the Miami Dolphins and the Seattle Seahawks. Now, this could have been a nice matchup. Uh, you know, before the season started, probably would have been a very intense, close game. But as of last week on Thursday night, we unfortunately saw Tua Tonga by Loa go down with yet another concussion. And with, you know, four concussions in the past three years, you really do have to wonder how, what is left in store for him. So, uh, as Mike McDaniel, he said, it's probably not in people's best interest to talk about if he will play more football or if he should play more football. We'll leave that decision up to do to a Dunga Bailoa himself. For right now, let's just assess, assess the team for what it is, and it's a quarterback uh, room of Skylar Thompson leading the way for the time being, and I think that's a significant downgrade to this Miami offense. Um, you know, when you have your wideouts as two of your premier pieces of this offense, obviously a uh, electric running back room with Ray Muster and Devon Ajan, but Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle being downgraded so significantly, I do think that they're a much more beatable team here. We saw how badly Buffalo dismantled them on Thursday night. Uh, the Seahawks, on the other hand, they have started 2-0, uh, you know, closely beating out the Patriots last week and winning more convincingly against the Broncos. I think that they can get it done against the Dolphins here and move on to 3-0. Next up, we have a matchup between the Baltimore Ravens and the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, the open to Ravens against the 1-1 one -one Cowboys. Now, this one is interesting just because the Ravens have looked pretty solid in both their losses. You know, barely losing in both games. Came up just sh short on week one against the Kansas City Chiefs, and then week two they had the lead and kind of choked it away both times. They were very close to victories, so really this Baltimore Ravens team could be 2-0. That is somewhat of a realistic scenario for them. The Cowboys, on the other hand, they got their, their butts handed to them uh, last week against the Saints. Very lousy, lackluster performance by them. Um, looked great against the Browns, but then looked horrible. And so, right now, it's more who is in desperation mode, and I do think that's the Ravens. The Ravens starting 0-3 would be kind of, kind of the end of their 
regular season. Like, it's very, very difficult to make the playoffs after an 0-3 start. I think that the Bengals did a couple years ago. But, really, if you want to have a shot at the top of this division, or even at the wild card, starting off 0-3 does put you in a deep, deep hole. So, I think it's going to take everything in them to win this game here. And I do think it is kind of like must-win territory at this point. The Cowboys, on the other hand, you're not that far back in this division. Giants are out and two. Commanders are one and one. The Cowboys are one and one. They can afford another loss. Obviously, they're not going to play like they can afford another loss, but they lost pretty badly. I think that they have a lot to consider in the Ravens. I, I do think they are a tough team. Um, we saw the Saints did the Cowboys. The Browns obviously struggled a lot more. It's hard to know. It's hard to know what we're going to get with this Cowboys team. Um, but I'm going to go with the Ravens here. I think that they do need it. They're going to treat this almost like a playoff game. Well, maybe hopefully not. They're not as good in the playoffs. But they're going to put a lot of pressure on themselves to win this one. We might see more desperation out of them. The Cowboys, I think even if they don't win it, it's not as much of a panic. Uh, whereas, like, the Ravens could be sitting at 0-3 and, and the Steelers could be sitting at 3-0, and, and that would be very worrisome for them. So, Ravens are going to understand what's at stake, and I think that they're going to go out and get a win. Then we've got a matchup between the 49ers and the Rams. Oh, boy. Uh, both teams coming off of losses. The 49ers not able to get it done against the Vikings. Very unexpected, in my opinion. Christian McCaffrey goes to IR. He's going to be out, like four to six to eight weeks. They've said that they'll assess after his first stint of IR is over, but kind of surprising that they did that. I wasn't expecting it. You know, no one, I, I don't know if people knew that his injury was that major hang into week one. So we're going to see this 49ers offense without him uh, just being led by Jordan Mason. Now they also lose Debo Samuel. So those are two pretty significant injuries, but I will say on the Rams side, they have probably more significant injuries uh, with Bukanakua and Cooper Cup going down. Buka going down, you had Cooper Cup kind of like take over as the main guy once again, but with him out as well, this wide receiver group is reduced to ashes. You've got like Jordan Whittington, you've got Tyler Johnson, uh, Demarcus Robinson, even with the 49ers injuries, I think that Jordan Mason has been filling in very nicely. And you still do have George Kittle and Brandon Ayuk. Uh, and those are guys that are still like star caliber players. So overall, I think that the 49ers offense is not as damaged. One second. Sorry about that. Uh, and... Yeah, after a blowout loss by the LA Rams, I I can't say that I have faith in them. I'm going to have to go with another loss. So the Rams will start 0-3, and the 49ers, I do expect them to add another win and climb back up into the positive territory. Next up, we've got a game against the Detroit Lions and the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, Lions last week looked not very good, um, mostly because of Jared Goff. Goff throwing multiple interceptions in that game against the Buccaneers. They couldn't get their offense in alignment the way that they're usually able to. Um, defensively, I think that they did a good job of limiting the Bucks. That wasn't that bad. They just couldn't get it together on offense, causing them to really struggle. Cardinals, on the other hand, one heck of a performance. Um, Kyler Murray, they sent his jersey to the Pro Football Hall of Fame because he's one of the few, one of like two guys to throw for 250 yards and rush for 50 yards and have a perfect passer rating, something like that. Um, Marvin Harrison Jr. had his breakout game, so lots of positive for the Cardinals there. They're proving why Kyler Murray should still be in conversation for one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Uh, the Lions, on the other hand, Things are getting dicey. Uh, you've got the 2-0 Vikings at the top of the division. Everyone else is sitting at 1-1. One one. Packers, Bears, Lions, any of these teams get another victory. Now you could be multiple teams down in the pool. Uh, 
another another reason why they might view this as a must-win game. Kind of similarly to the Ravens, we had Dan Campbell come out and talk about how it is partially his fault that they lost. Uh, if you saw the game in the first half, right before halftime, they they had like an errant snap. Basically, they were trying to spike the ball, get a couple points on the board, and they ended up getting a clock runoff, and they weren't able to add to their score before halftime, and that did play a pretty big part in their loss. Uh, so, if Jared Goff can come out and do a bit better, then that'll definitely be helpful, but I think that all in all, the Lions, they're more, they're more hungry for this win. The Cardinals, honestly, the Cardinals being busy and the Cardinals team itself probably, probably is very hungry as well. Just because week one you almost came out and stunned the Bills, and then after that you had indeed a stunner against the Rams. So I think this team is being discounted. They are a little bit better than I was expecting defense really held up last week, but this will be their hardest defensive assignment. Uh, they couldn't really control Josh Allen, and Josh Allen, I was expecting him to be a little more in check than he was. That offense was rolling with him. Then week two, you have the scraps of the Rams offense, you know, with everyone injured. Matthew Stafford can't make something out of nothing. It's not Detroit. Uh, and now you have actual Detroit, but the Lions are loaded on the offensive side of the ball in every which way. We have not seen a good game from Sam Laporta thus far. I think that they corrected Amon Ross in Brown's bad performance from week one to week two. Got him much more involved. Now I expect them to do the same for Laporta, and I think that the Lions will come out of it a victory here. Next up, we've got the Sunday night matchup between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Atlanta Falcons. Chiefs coming away with back-to-back -back close victories in weeks one and two. Uh, you know, both against the AFC North teams. The Bengals leading for a decent chunk of this game and then losing it at the very last second to a game-winning field goal by the Chiefs. Um, gotta say, the Bengals did everything in their power to win that game. You know, it was, truly was a valiant effort by them. Defensively, probably one of the worst games of Patrick Mahomes' career, but Chiefs still managed to win. Uh, I think that they're going to bounce back. Travis Kelsey has not even been a factor so far this season. They've been doing it all without, like, phenomenal play from some of their best players. Uh, the Falcons, on the other hand, they've been sloppy both weeks. Looked pretty bad against the Steelers. Looked better against the Eagles. Putting it together when it really mattered and getting the victory. But I will not say that I... I have trust in this Falcons offense, yeah. The defense, I think that the defense is pretty solid, but the Kansas City Chiefs offensively, they, they have a lot. Um, I mean, you did a good job against the Eagles. The Eagles were short shorthanded, though. Uh, you're playing against an Eagles team with no A.J. Brown. That would have made a big difference. Um, the Chiefs, they do lose Isaiah Pacheco, and that could be pretty major. Not having your lead workhorse back anymore, but the Chiefs go out and they pick up Kareem Hunt. Kareem Hunt, not as efficient as he once was, but reunites with his old home team, uh, the guys that drafted him. Now your running back room will be led by, I don't know if he's expected to play in this game particularly, but Samaj B. Ryan, uh, Kison Wallace, no, Kison's, Kison Steele. Yeah, Carson Steele, Jason Steele, something like that. So, less impressive running back room. Maybe you have to depend more on Patrick Mahomes, but he is usually up for that task. Uh, I'm going to go with the Chiefs here. You know, won both their first two matchups. I think that both of those first two teams I was more afraid of than the Falcons for them. I think that they'll be able to get it done. Yeah. Then we've got two Monday night matchups. Uh, the first of these two Monday night matchups is a game between the Jacksonville Jaguars and the Buffalo Bills. Uh, you know, I might have been a little bit too early on the downfall of the Bills. They, they have surprised me thus far. Uh, week one, they did really well against the Cardinals. Josh Allen, one heck of a performance. In week two, they come out. I was already expecting a loss against the Dolphins, and boy, did they make me look silly for that. Um, 
early early onslaught really you know lots of picks uh picks turned directly into points defense is way better than i was expecting in week two um offensively they're able to run all over james cook had a phenomenal day josh allen not not even needing to do all that much so overall this team is just better than I was thinking. I was thinking that all the offseason losses would hurt them more than it has thus far. Yeah, it might it might still be their division. I I had them missing the playoffs. I might and it might even be early enough to say I was wrong on that. Um still holding out hope. <laughs> but either way Oh yeah, with the Dolphins injury, I think yeah, they probably do make the playoffs now. But the Jaguars could not get the ball moving in the right direction until, like, too late in the game. Um, you know, pretty impressive in week one early on. Then turned the ball over, kind of lost that game fairly because of that turnover. Week two, not good offensively. Brown's defense really stymied them until the very end when they got some good things going, but they just got another groove way too late. Wasn't able to make it that close. I, I think that... Actually, I think it was somewhat close. Let me double check on that. Five point loss. Um, they got a safety. How interesting. Uh, anyhow. I, I still don't know. I, I think that the Bills, unfortunately, I think that they're going to win this one. They, they're able to do a really good job against the Dolphins. I was expecting that. Jaguars thought that they would do better in Week 2 than they actually did. Uh, starting 0-3 is going to be tough. It's really going to be tough, but as of right now, the Bulls just look better. Now, obviously anything can happen, but it's not like the Bills suffered any major injuries or anything like that. I, I, have, I have nothing pointing me towards an upset here. It would just be for the sake of watching the Bills lose or wanting to root against them, but I'm not going to do that just to do that. I think, like, logically, the Bills should win this game. I'm expecting them to win this game, so I'm going to go with it. Uh, they, they've been impressive and <laughs> can't can't yeah. Anywho. Finally, we've got the Commanders versus the Bengals. Heading out week one. Also on Monday night. Commanders week one. Didn't really know who they were yet against that Tampa Bay Buccaneers team. Then week two. Not the best offensive showcase, you know, not able to score any touchdowns, but you were able to win just off of uh, Siebert's leg, so shout out to him, uh, you know, they got the ball down the field, not all the way down the field, but they got the offense moving enough that they were able to win that game, I don't think that's going to cut it for the Bengals, Bengals coming off a close loss to Kansas City, they start going to again, but I think over the last two seasons, no, not the last two, over the last few seasons, five seasons, they have started one in nine across the first two weeks. Joe Burrow has been one of the worst quarterbacks in the first two weeks. Now he's had the time to warm up. I think that the commanders, they've been lying a lot of points to wide receivers. I uh, saw Malik, Lane, Malik Neighbors last week in his breakout game. Week one, we saw how both Mike Evans and Chris Godwin went off. I think with the against coming back, you're going to see a big game from both Jamar Chase and Higgins. Joe Burrow's probably going to pass for a lot. The Commanders, I don't think that they're ready offensively to keep up with what's in store for them in this one. I'm going to go with the Bengals here, winning their first game of the year. And yeah, that is it. We are finally done with all of the week three predictions. Let me go through all of them just one more time. Thursday night, I've got the Patriots beating the Jets. Then on Sunday, I have 
Browns over the Giants, Packers over the Titans, Colts over the Bears, Texans over the Vikings, Eagles over the Saints, Steelers over the Chargers, Buccaneers over the Broncos, Panthers over the Raiders, Seahawks over the Dolphins, Ravens over the Cowboys, 49ers over the Rams, Dolphins over the Cardinals, Chiefs over the Falcons, Bills over the Jaguars, and Bengals over the Commanders. So there you have it. Those are all my week three predictions. Please let me know uh, what you think, if you agree, if you disagree, how you feel about your team so far. Uh, just a couple updates about what's going on. You might notice that this is a completely new room, new background. Uh, this is indeed the room that I'll be recording all my videos in this year. A couple of things I still need to figure out. One is how to soundproof this room a little bit better thus far. Uh, the doors are very thin and we have our room facing right towards the kitchen and the living room and right now no one's here but I can still like clear as day here when the trash can is open I can hear when uh, someone is even moving around out there so when people are coming in and talking and things like that uh, it's gonna be tough so I need to soundproof that area number two I'm supposed to have a black backdrop behind me uh, it's a little bit I mean it looks okay right now the back background I was able to make it look okay um, but I bought this black backdrop to give you like a solid color background right behind me just so that you know the videos aren't so bright it's easier to fall asleep to things like that um, but I wasn't paying attention when I bought it I bought this strictly the like backdrop and not the frame I thought it was a set with everything and so uh, it's just a big black cloth that I have no way of hanging up yet so frame is on the way that'll probably be set up next week you'll likely see that I'll see if I can incorporate any of these lights into anything maybe if the ceiling is somewhat visible I'll throw these on the ceiling once again um, as of right now the room is a big mess uh, it's not unpacked or ready or anything like that school doesn't actually start until next Thursday so I've still got a lot of time to set up but yeah still like major work in progress. I'm gonna have to do a lot of work here. Uh, I have the rest of today. I've got all of tomorrow to do a room settling type of stuff, but starting Saturday, I'm traveling to the Bay Area for one of my roommate's birthdays. He had a birthday earlier this summer. His parents wanted to do something nice for him, so all of us from the apartment and a few other friends in the area were all going up to the Bay, staying at his house, um, you know, living it up for his 21st and then we'll be back Monday night so what that means is it'll probably be another week of not that much uh, on my end I'm gonna have this Thursday night predictions video drop some night some point tonight um, but as far as this weekend I think once again I'm gonna be missing out on the usual Sunday night drop and then I'm hoping for Tuesday night to make some sort of combined video where it's like maybe recap plus waiver wire ads so instead of fantasy recap it'll just be a recap of what happened over this past weekend of football and then the additions for the waiver wire um and yeah uh, so that hoping for Tuesday night we'll, we'll see and then yeah uh, starting following week, week four, should be able to get out in my regular pace of content uh, where I'm going to be doing Tuesday night, Thursday night, and Sunday night. Uh, that's what I'm going for. So, yeah. As always, thank you for watching. If you enjoy content like this, feel free to like, comment, or subscribe. I'll be putting